All right, so I am going to be analyzing uh, Die Krea uh, by Schubert from Winterreise. Um, short little song here. Uh, I believe Die Krea means uh, the crow. Um, and yeah, so I will go ahead um, and play this little, little two minute piece uh, and then I can get to the section that I want to take a closer look at. So neat, neat little piece. I, uh, I worked on this actually a little bit, my voice lesson with uh, Dr. Steino. So I know I like this one really, really cool little thing. This is not the section uh, that I wanted to talk about. I just want to say that this little, this little lowered second right here, this D flat, really cool, only comes up in the very beginning of the piece and the very end of the piece. It's not in any, but that's, that's not the section I'm analyzing. Uh, so I can go back a little bit, I believe 50... 50 around there. Um, okay, we've got the interlude, and this is the section here that I want to hear. Yeah, so I want to take uh, this little, these little eight measures right here, pop over my little PowerPoint here. Um, yeah, so uh, the crow. I am not sure of the entire plot of Winterreise, uh, Winterreise, uh, but I know uh, that at this point the our main character is sort of being exiled and he's uh, wandering away, and he encounters this crow that starts to circle him. Um, and you can really start to hear that uh, circling, I mean, really throughout the entire piece uh, in these these triplets that we've get. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure it's throughout the entire song. There's always triplets or this rest triplet triplet um, in the piano accompaniment for, for the entire piece. Uh, and that really gives you like the little the, the feeling of, of this crow sort of circling around you as you're just kind of wandering along. Uh, or, or it could be uh, the main character himself, uh, sort of just wandering forever, just kind of walking around the very uh, romantic idea that they have of this, this lone man against all out against nature and, and that sort of stuff. But yeah, you can really hear, uh, I got my little piano here. That little re repetition there sounds again, it's just like it's circling. Um, and so, yeah, uh, you could hear a little bit in the recording that these four measures here, and then we get these next four measures, and these next four measures are very similar, in fact, to the beginning four measures. Um, it's 
almost uh not not quite we get a little bit of rhythm uh and stuff here but it's uh basically a sequence um this second line is a whole step up from this first line here so i went ahead uh, and filled in the uh lead sheet the chords uh we've got this main motif here um in the first line and again in the second line uh obviously the second line with different chord names but with this major chord i don't know if that's loud enough but a uh, major chord and then this augmented chord sounds very weird very cool very kind of tensiony you know uh sort of uncertain um we get the chord you can see here we've got an e flat and then a b flat augmented uh in first inversion and then when we uh sequence it up we get f and then um we get c augmented um and he does this it, it just unsettles you uh, a little bit in this in this section here this is sort of the middle section between the verse uh the first verse with the melody and the second verse with the or i didn't have the music in front of me but, but before we get the melody this is sort of the the middle section um and he doesn't give us he doesn't give us the the five the dominant of this e flat which would just be and that sounds a kind of boring and kind of old-fashioned but he he instead raises that uh so we get these these half step motions and that'll bring up uh and th those half steps are brought up a lot through throughout the entire piece really um because it switches from uh uh from harmonic and melodic uh minor with the uh, leading tone and the not raised leading tone uh, throughout the whole piece. Um, but ironically, when it sequences up in the second line, it sequences up by a whole step, uh, even though you can see that the half steps are a big thing in here. So we've got this repeating pattern there. Uh, and eventually the chords start to change a little bit. We've got uh, B diminished uh, second inversion. Then we get the C chord. Um, and then we start. We get the, another augmented chord before we launch into. And then we've got the end there. that uh and i'll go over to my next slide where we've got the roman numerals here um e flat if we're in the key of c minor major three it's not odd to go to the major three in c minor especially in a sort of a middle transition b section um and so what i what i did there uh i just realized this now uh as i'm recording this video this should not in fact be a five if we were in the key of e flat this would be a five diminished chord but uh i don't this is not a full modulation we just feel just a little bit so uh, i'll actually go in and change this it should really actually be with a b flat augmented this should actually be a uh a flat seven a major seven diminished uh right there so that was um did the, does that come up anymore no i think i think that was the only error i made there uh, but yeah we've got this major three and major seven which is again something not odd especially in a minor uh, because e flat is the relative major and then b flat is the dominant but again he gives us not the normal dominant but he gives us that raised fifth there so we've got those half step movements that again just feel really uncertain and weird and kind of off putting um and then we get over here we get something that uh functions <laughs> the the way that maybe we would uh expect uh, a chord to have function where um in traditional voice leading and that sort of stuff they really don't they really don't use augmented chords that much um we've got an e flat here in uh this third measure and uh just by listening to it you might think that it is a d fully diminished seven chord even though there's no d in that voicing when we have these repeated e flat d when you've got the e flat you might expect it to go down to d 
Um, and But in this case, uh, there is no D in this chord, and if we look at the spelling, it is in fact a B diminished. If there would be a D, if it would be a D diminished, I believe we would have an A flat there. Uh, instead of a B natural, it would be a C flat um, uh, with inter interchanging fully diminished seventh chords because they're all made out of uh, minor thirds and such. But yes, instead we get this... Um, We get, uh, there's more of those, uh, half steps or th half steps moving in thirds, just like we had seen with the E flat and the augmented chords. But here it sounds a little bit better because it's a diminished chord, which sounds like there's a little bit more resolution. Um, you could call this really, uh, if we wanted to analyze it, analyze it, you wouldn't probably call this a major one. You might think of this as a five of four, uh, but we're really just gonna treat this as a major one. Schubert uh, makes it major here uh, just to preserve um, or make the transition a little bit easier when we give a sequence because we get, uh, instead of having a C major, we eventually get this another augmented chord and so just going from a major to augmented is less steps than going from a minor to augmented where you versus which might sound just not maybe the same feeling he's getting into and then we have the same thing over here very similar with a major chord and then an augmented chord he gives the same thing as he did in the beginning we've got the major chord and then the dominant of that major chord is an augmented chord instead of just a major which would feel much nicer but doesn't give us that same uneasy feeling and then of course he rounds out the section um so then we have this f and it's sort of the same deal that we had in the previous measure. If you're just listening to it with all these repeated E naturals, even though there isn't an E natural in the voicing, you might think that it's an E fully diminished seven. And go back to that F that we had been hearing in the previous measures. But again, it's spelled differently and it's spelled as a C sharp fully diminished seven, which goes to D major which uh, is getting us closer uh, back out of this ambiguous place of all these of all these augmented chords and getting us uh, to feel back a little bit more in the home key as he goes on to the next verse with a five of five. And then, of course, uh, something might be a little bit interesting is you'd think, uh, you know, a five of five can go to a five or a five of five can go to a one, six, four. like that um but he doesn't do exactly the same thing uh as preserving the steps and again when i said he messes around with uh harmonic miter and melodic miter we get this augmented second in here uh which sounds really janky with the uh, f c sharp d c like that so it sounds really cool And of course, we the five of five goes to, of course, the five eventually, giving us this nice big old G7, which brings us back to the home key and back to that cool little melody with the um, and all those repeated triplets. And so all in all, nice little section, this use of these uh, weird augmented chords in here gives us that uneasy feeling as our, our main character is sort of just wandering out in the wilderness and this crow is just circling above him as if he's just waiting for him to fall over finally, but he just... It's just that repeated sense of unease with all these augmented chords and all of these minor seconds with the... Uh... All of that, but all in all, a very cool piece.